Now that you've completed drawing your swimsuit model here onto some plain copy paper and you have her, her hair just the way you like it, the swimsuit, everything's good to go. Now we're ready to transfer her to some clean marker paper. During this video, we'll transfer her over to marker paper as well. We're going to learn to do some shading here using the light sand and pink. So we'll do a few different shading variations as well as mixing some colors and we're going to also be using the blender. For the video part one where we do all the shading, you're going to want to have a clean eraser, your 2H pencil, your ruler, as well as light sand, pink, your clear blender, and then your white opaque marker, as well as your number eight micron pen. Of course, you'll need some Ben Feng paper. All right, let's get started. Now, for the majority of the drawing that I've done so far, I want to transfer this onto my marker paper. And then when I'm ready to come in and get the face and hands, it depends on your confidence level if you want to just draw a face right onto the marker paper as well as her hands. Or at that point, you can switch your croquis back underneath your marker paper and then you can get your hands and face on there as well. So just remember, before you open up this book, make sure you wash your hands, they're nice and clean so you don't leave any fingerprints on top of this. And then as soon as you open it, go ahead and put a little happy face here at the bottom corner of the face side up and tear this out. Now keep in mind later on, if you're gonna scan this image into the computer, it has to be only 11 inches wide, which would be the same as your legal size paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I tape this girl off to the same side of my marker paper, and then eventually this far side here, I'll end up trimming and throwing that into the trash. Now since the marker paper is already semi-translucent, you don't really need to have a light table in order to transfer here onto the front of the paper. But I'm going to use a light table here for my demonstration just so it's easier for you to see in the video. So, so far what I've done is I've transferred everything over from my pr preliminary sketch where I have my swimsuit, I decided what I want to do with my hair. The rest of this is just the croquis drawing. So the hands, the face, I want to get from the croquis. I already finished getting her legs and feet. Oh, and also keep in mind that I did not transfer things like I didn't want these guidelines that I put in on my preliminary sketch, as well as the plumb line here down at the foot and up here in her forehead. So I did not transfer any of that onto here. At this point from now on, I just want the drawings that are gonna be the girl in her swimsuit. So before I separate these two pieces of paper, I just wanted to go ahead and, and get my line for where I'm going to cut off this extra part of the marker paper right here. And now I can get ready to put her back onto my inked croquis and get her hands and face. Now that I have my marker paper here back on my original inked croquis, I could see like I made a little um, mistake here on her forearm, so I just went ahead and erased it and just went back and made sure I drew that in correctly. And here you can see where I've added a little bit here to her shoulders to make her more athletic. And now I'm ready to go and start drawing her faces and her hands. Now as I get in here and I completely finish tracing her off, you can see that I've drawn it in extremely light. It's just one even pencil thickness the whole way using my 2H. There's no guides in here at all. I'm just drawing the swimsuit and the girl. Also, if you take a close look at her face, you can see that I did not draw in her eyebrows or eyelashes because I'm going to do that later when I come back and I start inking. Also with the hair, we just have these clumps of hair to give us directions for when we're using the thick wide markers. And then later on when we use our ink pens and color pencils, we'll come in and get fine little hairs all the way through. So you don't need any of the eyelashes or eyebrows at this stage. So just double check on your girl to see if anything is missing. And if not, we're ready to start coloring.
At this point, we're ready to go ahead and start coloring her in. But what I want to do is I want to give you a chance to practice using this color as well as doing some shadowing before we do it on directly onto this girl. So come off to the side here where you have some room and put in two circles. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about shading these so they look like a, a ball. Now if you take a look at your handout of the mannequins, remember that this is the mannequin where it's facing up. So this is what you would see here. And then if we had turned the page over to the opposite side, this would be the reverse version of that. And the most important thing we need to know is what is the light direction? So this arrow here would be the light. So for instance, on this mannequin, you can see that the spotlight is hitting the side of her face and the side of her shoulders here, nice and bright. On the opposite side, this side of her face is in the shadow, her arm, this side of her body, it's all being shaded. So we have to know the source of the light. So again, once you take your drawing and you flip it over to start coloring from the marker side, you have to do the reverse of this. So the spotlight is on this side and we're gonna be coloring and shading here from the opposite, uh, the opposite side of the body. So here we are, this is the front of the paper. So I have my happy face down here, I've drawn my girl in pencil, and I have two light circles. Now for me, I went ahead and drew them in. I drew the circles in a little bit darker, so then it's easier for you to see on the video when I flip this over. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna have a light source. So come over here to the, um, uh, it's the left side of the paper and point an arrow going towards the circle. So this would be the same as our mannequin. The light source is here, basically on her right side. Now as we flip this over, you can see here's my circle and the light source now is coming from the opposite side. Now take out your marker and what we're gonna do is, for the very first circle, I just want you to completely color it in with one layer of light sand. So here I've colored in one wash of light sand. And also here from the marker side, what I'll do is I'll use my marker and I'll go ahead and draw in the light source arrow. And let's do the same thing for this bottom circle here. Now as we're sitting here, this one is getting more and more dry. And what I want you to do is go ahead and just let this dry for another minute. Now that your circle is completely dry, what we're going to do is we're going to throw a shadow in here to turn this circle into a round sphere. Now keep in mind that the light source is coming here from the right side of the paper going back towards the sphere. So all the shadow is gonna be here on this side of the ball. So watch me first. I'm gonna start with this bottom edge and I'll work my way up towards the middle of the ball and stop coloring altogether. Now that we've completed coloring that in a second time to start to give it this shadow so it looks like a round ball. Let's also let this dry completely, so give this another minute. Now let's come in and hit it a third time. So again, this was the first layer, second layer. Both of them were completely dry before we added the next layer. It's now completely dry again. We're gonna do a third layer. and then we'll let this completely dry also. Now let's come over to the front of the page and see what it looks like here. So you can get a good sense of the light source is hitting, it's basically an orange ball, and then this is the shadow side curving back under and away from us. Now the downside to this technique is we have a harsh line right here and another harsh line right there. But what would be really cool is, what if we could have the same rounding off shape 
and feeling with the shadow, but not have these harsh edges here. What we would need to do is we would need to be adding the shadows to this while it is still wet or partially dry. So that's what we're gonna do on the next one here. So watch me now and I'll do this first at actual speed and you'll get a sense of how fast I'm moving to accomplish this. So now I'm already starting to add that second shadow. So I started here, it was drying. As I moved down here, I moved back up, but I stopped. So I'm already adding the shadow while it's wet. And even right now, as we speak, it's still wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and start down here at my shadow bottom edge. And I'll get this wet again. And I'll work my way towards that area that's dry but making sure not to go too far up into the dry part or else I'll start to get a hard edge again. Now you can see that it's, it's blended quite a lot. So it's still too wet right now. If I were to keep adding more to it, I'm not really doing anything. I'm just getting the paper wet with the same tone. So I'm letting it dry somewhat so then I can come in here about now and I'm stacking this for now my third time and it's still somewhat wet. And you can see here I'm just starting to develop some brush strokes because this is where it's drier. I went up a little too high into that dry area. And then I'll pretty much let it dry just a little bit more and I'll see if I can get one more shade darker down here at the bottom. And that's pretty much all the ink that it's gonna accept at this level of being wet. So go ahead and try yours now. At this point, a few minutes have passed and it's pretty much bone dry. Let's take a look at it now from the front. So you can see between the two, these had three distinct color variations and hard edges in between them. And this one just blends from one color all the way down to this other color. And all the colors in between are a smooth even blend because we were doing it while it was wet. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do the same thing we've done here, but make it even more complicated. We're gonna break the circle in half and you have to do this in two halves, but still match up the shadows. So come down and let's get one more circle below that and put in your light source, this arrow here coming from the left side of the page. And turn your paper over and find that circle. And let's go ahead and highlight the light source coming in. Now the difference on this one, so come back here to the front side. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna cut this circle in half. Oh, and let's do it the direction that the light's coming from. So go ahead and split this in half horizontally, or split this in half 45 degrees matching the light source. And then add a second line here. So basically we have a break between the two. And then come down here where there's a break between the circles and erase the circle part right here and up here. So when you're coloring, you have to stop and this will be left empty. All right, so go ahead and turn your page over to this side and we're gonna color these two pieces right here. Now watch me do this first because it's gonna be kind of confusing at the first part. 
I'm gonna follow exactly what I did here. Same technique and everything. Same color, same technique, same shadow, everything. But I have to have that break in between the two ball pieces. So I can only do one half of the sphere at a time, but I need the shadows to match going across the break. So I'm gonna start up here where I know it can get dry and down in this area, I wanna keep it wet. So I'm gonna turn this so it matches my right hand coming down towards me. So now I'm starting to work my shadow into here. And I know I can let that start to dry just a little bit so I can get started on the other side. Now I'm coming back in, I'm starting to get this side of the shadow. And then this one that was drying, I'm gonna come back, this is gonna be my second layer while it's still semi-wet. This side still needs a second layer, but it also needs a minute to just half start to dry. So I'll come in here now and I'll start to get this starting from the bottom because that's going to end up being my darkest. Curving up. Now I'm ready for my third layer on this half. Again, I'm starting from the bottom. I'm working my way up. It's still wet enough that I will not have a brush stroke. And I want this side to dry a little and I'm ready for the third layer here. On that one, I was almost too late. I could see it was starting to get a little bit drier than I wanted. I almost got a brush stroke on that last little piece. And now at this stage, I need it to really dry a bunch. So when I add another layer, it's actually making it darker. If you keep just putting wet on top of wet, you'll end up just having the same exact shade. So now is pretty much my last chance to come in and get one more shadow all the way through while, while I'm leaving this break right here. So again, I'm going to start on this side. That's the side I did first. So I know this side is slightly drier than the other side. And I'll come back to this side. So while I let mine dry, go ahead and try yours now. Now let's take a look at this from the front. So here from the front, you can see we had the shading coming down. So this is the light side. This is the shadow side. Here we had it just smooth and clean the whole way. Here we're duplicating that, but we're having that seam break in the middle and we're still getting across the break the same exact curve and shadow that we see here. And just for practice, let's do a little bit of cleaning up on this. So take out your recollections pen and remember that this pen is only gonna work in layers. So we have to do a layer, let it dry, do another layer. Also, we don't want the pencil to smear on this so let's go ahead and erase the pencil now from the front of this page. 
Now, before I race anything, if I take a look at my racer, there's all kinds of dirt and, and um, lead on here from previous pencils. So what I'm gonna do is clean this either on the floor or the carpet or on your chair or something so it's nice and perfect and white. So now my eraser is clean and ready to go. And I also want to just wipe this down really quick in case there's any like little pieces of lead that are floating on there. And then I can come in here and start to erase all of the pencil lines we used to form the circle. And anything that doesn't erase very well, that's fine. That's great. It means it's not going to smear with this marker. So using our ruler, Let's go ahead and get a nice crisp edge where we intended it to be. And keep in mind, you're gonna to have to stack this marker a few times to get this right. And then these outside edges here, where it just got a little bit bleeding outwards from the circle, I'm gonna go ahead and start to touch those up. Now while this is drying and we want to come back and put in more layers on top of it, come down below it and what we're going to do is we're going to draw two more squares. So do this with me now. About the width of the circle, let's do two more squares. And then make it dark enough so you can see it from the other side. For me, I'll use my number two pencil so you can see it in the video. And then come over here to the other side of the paper for the marker side and take out your uh, light sand as well as your pink marker. Now for the first square here, what we'll do is we'll just color it in with light sand and let it dry completely. And while that's drying, let's go up here and get some more touch-ups with the recollection pen. And now that this square has completely dried, let's come here to the back side. So this is the marker side of the paper. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle here in the middle with our pink and then just go ahead and let that dry completely. While this is drying, go ahead and take your size eight micron pen and let's go ahead and outline this um, sphere that's divided into two pieces. Okay. So now taking a look down here, basically we colored in with the light sand, we let it dry completely, and then we put some pink in the middle there. Now this could be something that you want or not want. So for instance, if I was doing some kind of a dot, like a button or something, later on I'd come in, I would ink this and it would look all nice and crisp and clean. But let's pretend that what I wanted to do was to add a little bit of pink to her. So for instance, on her shoulder, if it was just a lightly little bit of a sunburn or pink, or maybe on her cheeks, on her lip, maybe somewhere down here on her leg or the tops of her hands. If you came back in and you added pink like this, she's going to look like a clown because she's going to have these pink cheeks. She's going to have these really crisp pink lips that are way too sharp and defined and then all these pink blotches on her where you were trying to show that she had like some kind of a sun on her skin. What we want to do is we want to get it wet, add the pink while it's still wet, let it dry a little bit and add just a little more pink to get the same effect without having any brush strokes. So turn this over and watch me first. So what I'm going to do to do this is I want to have both of my markers ready to go at the same time. Of course, I'm going to do my light sand first to get this wet. Now 
Then I would come in with my pink while it's still wet and get my circle. But you'll notice right away that circle doesn't really show up. It's because both of the colors are wet and they're mixing together. So you have to do what we were doing here. You have to let it semi-dry, add a layer, semi-dry, add another layer. So right now as I'm talking, it's been drying a little bit so I can come back, put some more pink on there. But it's still going to blend because it's still on the wet side. So you won't have that harsh brush stroke. Now depending on what color I'm looking for, I could hit it with a little more of the um, light sand to make this slightly darker and some more pink to keep stacking this. And letting it dry. And then what I want to do is I want to get just a little more pink in there And at this point, I pretty much have to stop or else I'm going to start getting brush strokes. So go ahead and try yours now. And then come back over here to the front and you can see the difference between the two. This one has that really distinct hard edge all the way around and this one just blends right into the color. Now, wouldn't it be cool if we can do this and it would blend into just white paper? Let's go ahead and do two more squares below this right here. And then come back here to the marker side of your paper. And this time I want you to take out your colorless blender as well as the light sand marker. Now for the first square, what we're gonna do is we wanna have the um, light sand start as a dot and disappear into nothing. To do this, you have to open both of these at the same time. The colorless blender, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna get the paper wet and then we're just gonna color a dot in the middle exactly like we did here and it will just fade out into nothing. So let's go ahead and get this square nice and wet. And then do it a second time so it's for sure all the way wet, all the way through. And while it's still wet, go ahead and do your dot right in the middle. and allow it to just start to fade out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it semi-dry. And I'll come back and I'll start from the center and work my way out, but only half the distance. I'm gonna let that semi-dry again. And now I'm gonna come in one last time and I'm gonna just start from the center and I'm moving out only about one third of the distance of the circle you can see. And that's pretty much all I can get stacking in there without getting a brush stroke. So go ahead and do this now and let it dry completely. Now for the other square, we want to do the opposite. I want to have color in all the corners and I want to have it disappear as it comes to the center. Now if I were to take the colorless blender and go all the way out to the outer edges, and all the way, of course, the whole thing, the whole square. 
And then if I were to start with light sand on the outer edges, the light sand will, will be bleeding outwards and inwards. So it's going to do a weird thing. What I really want is I want the outside edges to be nice and crisp, light sand only. And then as you come in towards the middle, then the color starts to disappear. If you compare the felt tips, so basically light sand is way darker than clear. So if I were to do light sand first and clear second, I'm going to get light sand all over my colorless marker. So how we have to do this is this guy goes first. What I'm going to do is basically I'm going to do this circle that you see here in clear and then I can do light sand all the way around it and have light sand bleed into the clear but I'll have sharp light sand on the outside edges. So I'll get it wet once. And I want to just kind of wait a minute because right now it's, it's bleeding outwards a little bit. And then I'm going to get it wet again in the middle of the circle and let that bleed towards some of where it's already bleeding. Now I can get my crisp outer edges and work in towards the clear marker. And then I'm going to get it wet one more time to bleed out towards that light sand. But I don't want to get any light sand here onto my felt tip. And then I'll come in while it's still semi-wet and start to hit this one more time on the outer edges. Just to make sure that those corners are super crisp and very light sand. While those are both drying, let's come back over here to the front and let's go ahead and frame these out using our ink pen. So now I got mine nicely framed out using the size 8 micron pen. As this one dries, I kind of wish that I pushed my um, light sand even further to make the circles about the same size. But overall, you get the idea how you can have it start to fade and disappear into the middle. Now that you've completed the video for shading for part one of the swimsuit model, I want you to go ahead and scan this paper and submit this to me as part of your assignment.